It's called the Expand Expanding Pedal Board. I think this is absolutely genius. That is for sure bigger than my current pedal board. It's the greatest idea ever, Jari. You're absolutely knocking it out the park for the minute. Good to see you. Good to see you. How you doing? I'm, I'm great. I'm glad you're here. We're, we're at the Brooklyn Bowl in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm with David Ryan Harris, and I'm John Bollinger with Premier Guitar. And let's talk about this sexy guitar you're playing. Can we please? <laughs> um, I actually got turned on to this guitar, a friend of mine, James Bay, for the second record. He, um, like the first song on the record was like a completely new direction in the first record. And he was playing like this super cool guitar and I just love sort of the the silhouette of it um, and I asked him about it and he was like oh it's these guys the Frank brothers up in Toronto and uh, I reached out to him and told him that just initially that I loved their uh, just the silhouette of the guitar I think it's really hard at this point because we all have the silhouettes in our brains that sure. are the silhouettes and so I think a lot of times when people try to do new designs they just look like jackass designs <laughs> yeah so yeah, right. i was like this you know it's a new silhouette it harkens b back to you know classic designs but it's also sort of futuristic so i was just like just kind of telling them that i loved it and i you know at the time i didn't uh i wasn't looking for a new guitar necessarily and then over time um i started playing this 330 this like a like a 2012 gibson 330 for my like solo electric sets yeah um Everybody was doing like kind of solo acoustic things. And I was like, oh, I want something with a little more teeth, but I still want the sound to have some air around it. Yeah. So I've been playing this guitar and it's, it's big and, you know, I was like, it'd be cool to play something that's a little bit different. And then I just love the idea of like, I know the guy that made that, you know, I know the guy that right. made that guitar. Yeah. Um, and so then we just started talking about how to, how to build something that um, had a little bit of air around it, but then still st stayed in their general kind of footprint of how large guitars are. And this is this is what we came up with. It had um, had humbuckers in it at first, um, Lawlers that I liked, and I, I was like, there's something missing. It's not quite like the 330. And then I was like, oh, the thing I love about the 330 is also the P90s. It's not just the body. So now I'm uh, frankly in a uh, in a space where I'm trying to find the right P90s. I know P90s are the way to go, just gotta find the right ones. Yeah. Well, these sound fabulous. What, yeah. what are they? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I, I was in a shop in Atlanta, and they're a local, a local pickup maker, but I can't remember their names. Huh. I, it looks so perfect for that guitar. It's the same, it, like the color is yeah. gray. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it, the, 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 the nickel kind of matches the rest. So, right. I mean, it almost has this kind of Jetsons aesthetic, you <laughs> exactly. know? Exactly. Like exactly. the 60s version of space travel. Right, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. It's, yeah. Yeah, so far I'm like really, really into it. Um, oh, that's great. So it looks like a mahogany body that's truly hollow. Mm -hmm. Is it hollow all the way through? It's hollow like you're, all the like way you're through. Like your 330, yeah. okay, yeah. cool. And is it a maple cap on well, it? No, you're getting outside my pay grade. Okay, well, you know what? We'll, we'll, uh, we'll have it in the liner notes and you can check it out there. Yeah, or, it's... A, but I do know it's a it's a Frank Brothers Ultralight. Okay. Um, that's a, the model that it's based on. And I think we might do a little bit of tweaking for a subsequent guitar just because, like, this is super close. But I'm like, if we could just dial in a little more kind of air around it. So we may, like, sure. experiment with, like, a lighter top. But then, you know, if you do that, then the headstock's too heavy. So just, you know, <laughs> trying to right. balance the whole thing yeah. out. Yeah. Well, it is it is great, yeah, man. Great I work. just I love it. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so and you're traveling with one guitar. I'm traveling with one guitar. Lean and mean. Lean and mean. Yeah, love it. And yeah. uh, and hopeful. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's an optimist. <laughs> yeah. When you can go sure. on a tour yes. with one guitar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's great. That's yeah. A, okay, and then a fairly modest pedal board. Yeah, I mean I have a few different pedal boards kind of depending on what the gig is. Well I bet at this point you kinda got everything. For, yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. So this one, I just kind of recently 
put together in this current configuration. Um, you know, underneath is a uh, is a um, the iridium. Oh yeah. If I don't have an amp, so that thing's kind of covered. Uh, obviously, in this situation, I'm using an amp, so I don't I don't use that. So in the event you don't have an amp, you just go direct out of that yeah, and pull and up a Fendery kind of for sure sound. Yeah. Okay. Um, I love the way it's hidden in there. I know. Set it and forget it. I know. It's yeah. A, it's a pretty sexy setup. Yeah. The, the kids are impressed when I show up with a double, <laughs> yeah, right. double ticker. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, right. Pedal board. Um, you know, my uh, my general aesthetic for the solo shows is I want to keep things interesting, but not too many like tricks. Sure. Um, and so this this board, you know, it covers a lot of bases. This prism, um, I always say I could show up anywhere with any rented amp and the prism can just carve out a great tone. Mm -hmm. I just think it's really... Um, okay, so what is the prism? Is it... Is it's, it it's like a, I think it's like a, um, there's a preamp. Okay. It has a, the EQ section and three different levels of like sort of boost crunch and then okay. three other levels on the other side. There's like one, it's like a transformer, one has like a color and one is something that I can't read because I don't have my glasses on. Yeah. But it's just like a great tonal shaping huh. kind of thing. Um, so is that an always on pedal? It's generally always on. Yeah. Um, and it just kind of gives you a little something to play against. Sure. Uh, and some of it's probably in the fingers. I can feel it more than maybe somebody can hear it. Now you're all, do you always play with your fingers? No, no, but most of the time, yeah, especially I, on the solo gig. I went on a deep, YouTube dive last night, yeah. and I never saw you play with a pick. <laughs> play the pick, yeah. it, which is a relatively new th thing. And you know, I've been playing guitar for I don't know, 35 years or so. Yeah. And the the finger style thing is really like in the last 10 or so. Yeah. Um, and so it actually just makes it so that the 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 tone that I have to pick from is a little more broader because when I do play with a pick, it's like that is on a completely opposite spectrum right. than the other. So. I do use it for some things. Some things like rhythmically, I have to have a pick. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I do sometimes. Okay. And um, when you do use a pick, mm -hmm. what pick do you use? Um, or do you just not even care? No, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do care. They're generally pretty, pretty heavy. Some players are, players are really loyal to their pick, yeah. and then other people have a revolving cast. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I have these these Dunlops that I've used forever. I have a. You know, it's a, it's like the, whatever the purple one is. Sure, that's, yeah, that's the good one. That's what that oh, yeah, is, but in black. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah. that's got, they feel like you got something in your hand yeah. there. Yeah, and it says uh, the law offices of David Ryan and Harris <laughs> on, uh, on, the, on the pick. Uh, and the, the other pick that I do love and sort of swear by, but I can't remember what it's called. I think it's like, I think it's called a Herco. Oh, yes, yes. And it's got the sort of, serrated kind yeah, of yeah, thing. I, yeah. I played guitar with Richie Sambor for a while and those are the picks that he used. Really? And he turned me on to those. I was like, these are amazing. Cause I love like, like yeah. just kind of digging in like ZZ yeah. Top, almost like a quarter kind sure, of thing. Yeah. And this, this will get that vibe. Yeah. I love those picks. You know, that, I didn't expect that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause that's a big departure from the From, from cool none, yeah, for sure. Tone, but when you, yeah, when you dig in there, it's great. It's, a, it's got a great, like scrapey tone. It's almost like, you get the feeling that you've kicked on a distortion pedal, but it's just, just it's just that aim. pick. Yeah, huh. yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Good. That's uh -huh. cool. Okay. So, uh, so you go polytune into the prism. Into the prism, and, and then, then, do you know about this pedal, the no. the outward? The company doesn't exist anymore. I think the brains behind the company is now partnered with um, Chase Bliss. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I know those guys. I have no idea why I went on Reverb and bought this pedal. But I got it and it's like, I think it's the coolest pedal probably ever made. Okay, so it's called the, the Cooper FX Outward. Outward? Yeah. All right. It has a few different modes where it, it does different things. The mode that I use the most is, I don't know if I'm explaining this properly, but it's almost like it does a, um, like a granular sort of a, a sample once your volume gets above a certain level and it just holds it in a buffer indefinitely. Huh. So I can use, it's good for like if you want long tails but you don't want the chord to, to um, carry over into the next chord because every time you get over the buffer then that chord goes away. Oh. So you get, you know, I can yeah, get... Yeah, I want to I hear this. Uh, Pretty cool. Wow. So it's like the freeze thing. 
then it has another mode where, with a pitch where I can go. Um, and it'll just keep it. Wow. Yeah. So it's like it, it, it just knows when you hit the right, next note and it it's, cancels I think it's, the I other think it's one? just a matter of the volume getting above huh. whatever threshold is set in the pedal. And wow. it's just like, it's fun to play. Um, sometimes I do stuff with like a rubber guitar, and so having the uh, super short note of that with the combination of this is just, yeah. it's magical. And it still, to me, it still has a level of, um, it feels organic. It's not like, like a right. lot of shimmers feel, shimmers feel yeah. chewy and weird. This still right. feels, you know, it just, it's, uh, Wow, okay, I love that. <laughs> that's uh, really, yeah, that's cool. You can still, still find. Total impulse buy, huh? For sure, for yeah. sure, and I, I, I love it. They make another pedal called the Arcade, and it's about the same form factor, but it has these little cartridges that you put in, and each cartridge does something different. Yeah. Just kind of like wacky, um, just really, I don't know, just really cool to tones and fun to play. Yeah, okay, that's great. All right, and from there into another one I've never heard of. Well, uh, have you seen the Protein? The uh, Brown Amplification Protein? It's like a great sort of dual, um, dual overdrive thing. One side is uh, like the Nobles OD okay. that everybody loves, and then the other side is like a Blues Breaker. Yeah. Um, that pedal, uh, those guys brought me one on tour with Mayer, and I was like, this is like the best like dual distortion thing, you know, overdrive thing for me that I've ever heard. But I was like, what, what would happen if you did two of the blue side, which is like the blues breaker side? So that's what this pedal is. It's, oh. um, so is, did they kind of do this to order for you? Yeah, okay. I think they may. I think this may uh, hit the market as a real thing. But at this, at this juncture, uh, I just like my super cool, like, you know, it looks very bespoke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I love it. Love uh, it. Okay. And yeah, then let's hear that thing. <laughs> Once again, not, not super appropriate for a solo, uh, solo yeah. singer-songwriter thing, but if I need it, I got it. Yeah, and yeah. If, you, if you need to drown out a drummer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and this right also there. is like really fun to play in just in terms of being dynamic. Wakes up that deluxe. Yeah, it? for sure, for sure. Yeah, that's great. Okay, Still cleans up pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Love it. Uh, then I got this super octave, which is a relatively new thing. And you know, again, you kind of want something that's not like like I don't want to seem like a, a circus. Sure. Up here with like you know tons of sound, and people are like, well, what? Where the fuck's that sound coming <laughs> yeah. from? Yeah. So <laughs> this will allow you to. Um, set where, where it has a mode where you can set where the low octave cuts off and okay. so i just have it i'm tuned to e flat so i just have it where the, the low octave cuts off at the second e flat and i want it to sound basically like the audience is like i think i hear bass but i'm not <laughs> i'm not sure so it's sure. just like a dusting and it's just a really cool thing again it's uh <laughs> That's great. You know, I love that that you. It sounds like you've got your full non-affected tone going through, and just that that subtle bass. Yeah, just need. a little dusting. Yeah, dusting. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And also, if it, if there's too much, most guitar amps can't take it, and right. it just kind of breaks up in a not pleasing way. Sure. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, okay. So that, so that keeps me honest. Okay, the tried and true Super Octave 3. Love yeah. it. Okay, and then next to that, the JHS something. Yeah, that's uh, Madison Cunningham's signature pedal. And it's just a, um, a vibrato, but it's got a really cool EQ and volume. Um, the EQ is just like, a, I guess, a single point, so you can basically like a tone knob. Okay. And then two different, uh, two different tremolo, I mean, vibrato circuits. And I have one set to fast and relatively shallow, and the other is a little, uh, a little slower and deeper. Okay. That's what she well, said. Well, let's, uh, let's see a little taste test. Mm -hmm. That's a fast setting. So when you go between the slow to the fast, does it kind of ramp up like a Leslie? It, yeah. Well, no, no. It's, 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 uh, so I wish no, it was. Immediate. That would be cool. It's immediate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, nonetheless, very cool. Yeah. Okay. Love that. Uh, then there's like the ubiquitous flint that sure. I have. Um, and this, with this setup, there's a little bit of verb on the amp. Yeah. So you said it's kind of like the just the bass verb, and then this the verb on here is more. Uh, That's dreamy. Can't tell you anything that someone hasn't already told you about yeah. the flint. Everyone no, loves but, the flint. Yeah, it sounds great. And then the harmonic trim on that, because that's my favorite. Totally that brown fender thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Um, and then the, the ditto that I use I use sometimes. It's just cool to be able to set something up quickly. But again, I want it to. I don't want it to seem like I'm tap dancing or doing a bunch right. of circus stuff. Right, right. Yeah, that can be distracting when a when they, you know. Yeah. Like, well, wait, which sound is really <laughs> yeah, happening? What's, what's, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. What's he playing? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And what's on tape? Is that stuff on tape? Yeah, right. Um, but that was great. I just love the form factor of it. it. Took me a while to get used to having to step on it twice. Sure. To uh, to to clear it or stop it. But um, I love how small it is. Yes. Too. Cow, amazing. Me yeah. too. Because I'm always wearing like large shoes. So, sure. I need, uh, you know, the, uh, <laughs> so sometimes that's a problem. Like now I realize like this needs to move over a little bit so I can get in here and not step on them. Step oh, on yeah. them both. Yeah, isn't that funny as you as you uh, as you gig the little tweaks we make? Yeah, to, yes, uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then all this is just going to, I assume, a backline. Backline, yeah, yeah deluxe. That's which, clean business. Yeah. Just a, one guitar, modest pedal board. I, I feel lean and mean. Yeah. So when you're out with Mayor, I'm, it's probably a very different. There's more than one guitar and a lar larger pedal yeah. board and a louder amp. <laughs> yeah, a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of stuff. Well, that's great. Yeah. yeah. But when you're carrying your own stuff. And then, you know, when I'm doing this, this, this solo gig, this is, it's just perfect. Like I even run my acoustic down this line yeah. sometimes. And then I just turn off the amp and just come directly out of that and go right into a. What acoustic are you using? Cause I've seen you using that, that Fender, whatever it is. That oh, the, the Yamaha. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, a yeah, Yamaha, yeah. the FG. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, that's been, that, that was like my number one for the huh. lot of the mayor. Well, all of the last mayor tour and that's still kind of the one that I play now. Yeah. I just, I love the small body. Uh, I think yeah. the pickup in it is really, really good. And I love playing a guitar that like anybody, you know, like it's a relatively inexpensive right. guitar. Um, although I do take care of it. It's not a guitar. Like if it fell over or got stolen out of my, yeah. uh, you know, not that that should be a selling point for a guitar, <laughs> but it's like, it's a, it's a the workhorse yeah. guitar and it sounds good every time. Yeah. 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 And it, and actually I like that little body. It's yeah. just a, very practical, yeah. For 100%. Yeah. Well, great. Well, man, such a pleasure to meet you, and, and uh, thanks for taking the time. I know you got to get the gig tonight and sound check and all that. But yep. I want to thank you for, like, doing, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a nerd, and I watch this channel all the time. So, <laughs> so the number of times that I've gone on to see how, you know, you see how other people do it, and in some way, I'm sure some, some uh, 
some show of yours has informed how I put my pedal board oh, together. Oh, well, so. <laughs> golly, well, right, well, it's part of the nerd herd. Yeah, That's, yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. we are, we are a, a strange bunch. Yeah, right, yeah. right. All right, y'all, till next time.